who are not totally familiar with Stony Brook. Um, we are located on Long Island in New York and we are part of the SUNY system. So we are a public school. Um, there's about 64 campuses to the SUNY system and we're one of the four main university centers. What makes us university center is our size. We have about 18,000 undergrads. We have division one athletics, research and doctoral programs. Um, you may have had the chance to visit the area. If not, this kind of gives you a little idea of what the area is like. Um, the village of Stony Brook itself is a cute, quaint town that sits right on the water on the Long Island Sound. Um, it's actually architecturally one of the first planned strip malls in the country, um, but it has a really nice feel to it. Um, we have Avalon Park for hiking right in town, and uh, there's a vineyard there as well, and lots of uh, stores and things like that. So our students do like to hang out in the area. And then just 10 minutes east of us is the village of Port Jefferson. So this is a nice seaport town. This is where the ferry comes in from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, so that's a great way to travel for our New England students. Um, but this is another great area to hang out. Lots of restaurants, lots of places to go out. In the wintertime, we have an ice skating rink, an outdoor one. Um, there's lots of ice cream shops and all sorts of things. So another fun place for our students to hang out as well. So um, you probably want to know more about the first year experience at Stony Brook. Um, so we do have something called undergraduate colleges. Um, these are purely interest based. And basically they create three living learning communities at Stony Brook. Um, so the three different communities are uh, social justice, equity and ethics, creativity, technology and innovation, and global health, wellness and community. So again, these are interest-based. They have nothing to do with your major. You get to uh, rank your preference of these coming into the university, and then they will put you into one of these themed communities. So basically, it's a way for you to get to meet other students that have the same interests you do. Um, as I mentioned before, we have 18,000 undergrads at Stony Brook. So this is a nice way to kind of help shrink everything down and assimilate students to the university. Now, along with these communities, uh, you're going to have a first year advisor to help see you through your time at Stony Brook. Um, they have special events as well. Oops, sorry. And uh, your freshman 101 and 102s are going to be centered around these. So you're actually going to see, um, you know, like a, a dedicated person from the university on a weekly basis. So this will also help you in, in your first year at Stony Brook. So they'll talk about stress management, time management, and all the other things that will help make you successful all four years at Stony Brook. Um, does, from our student of panel, uh, panel of students, does anyone want to talk about maybe their experience uh, with the undergraduate colleges? Um, I would say that in terms of the undergraduate colleges, I have, um, I think I, I had the chance to have my first year before COVID. So everything, everybody was back in person, but I think that I had at least more experience with my, in my actual like individual residence hall because of hall council, which is where you can actually uh, meet a lot of people who live in the same residence area. And uh, most of the time, a lot of them will be freshmen. So you get to meet a lot of friends there through there. Great, thanks, Kevin. Does anyone else have anything else they wanna add? I know for some of you, freshman year was a little while ago. <laughs> okay, great. So we'll move on to the next slide. Um, in terms of our classes at Stony Brook, we have a whole wide range of classes. Um, the interesting thing is that our professors um, teach graduate school as well. So you have your professor could teach undergrad and grad as well. So um, it's also a really nice collaboration between students and professors. Um, the student to faculty ratio is 19 to one. And as a freshman, you're gonna have a wide range of classes. So does anyone wanna talk about the different class opportunities as a freshman? Um, I would say that as a freshman, you probably have the most opportunity to take like a bunch of classes that you might have not thought about. Um, generally, like as you go and become like a, a sophomore and junior, you start getting into the hang of your own major. So you become limited in the scope. But because of uh, Stony Brook's uh, general curriculum that you have to uh, fill out, there's a lot of classes that you can take. I think 
uh, my freshman year, I took an introduction to Latin American history course. And uh, that was really interesting, at least for me, because I am Latino. Um, but yeah. Excellent. And uh, the interesting thing about the classes too is um, in terms of the size, you're gonna have a range. So some of your intro classes might be lecture hall style. Um, I'd say the average lecture hall is about 125. Um, the largest we have is 500 students. That's like the intro to bio, intro to chem classes. Um, however, those have a recitation. So on a third day that week, they break it down into much smaller classes um, in terms of students. So it's usually about 30 students or so within a recitation and they go over what they already discussed in the lecture hall. Uh, but as a freshman, you're not gonna have all lecture hall classes. Um, you're gonna have some classes with much smaller sizes. So you could have other classes with 30 students in it. Um, so you will have a, a wide range of types of classes and a wide range of class size as well. Uh, learn by doing. So there's lots of different ways for you to get a hands-on experience outside of the classroom and do it during your freshman year. Um, so it's something we kind of pride ourselves on at Stony Brook. So I mentioned before, we are a research institution. We are an AAU, American um, Association of Universities. That's the top 62 research universities in the country. Um, so we do have opportunities for freshmen to get involved. Um, you can start as early as second semester freshman year. Um, we have a program called Eureka, which helps our students get involved. You can do research on your own or with faculty members at Stony Brook. Uh, we have the study away option. So whether you wanna study abroad or we even have a national student exchange program where you study at another university within the country for a semester, um, you can start doing that second semester freshman year as well. Um, you can also go to our career center and they can help guide you um, even if you're undecided, they can help you in terms of what type of major you can start doing internships right away and getting that hands on experience that will also help guide you throughout your time at Stony Brook so you can start doing that as early as freshman year. And then volunteer work can always be done at any time. Um, you can start doing that as a freshman as well. So does anyone want to talk about their experiences maybe with research or any of the other areas. Um, I can start. So I um, had exposure to research actually during COVID. Um, I found that through our website called Handshake, which is also a version of LinkedIn, if that's more familiar to you guys. Um, so there they you can basically check off your major and what interests you have. So either part-time, full-time, volunteering, anything like that. And so I found um, a post by Stony Brook Medicine and they were looking for research assistance and I applied for the job and I got it. Um, so that was a small project over COVID. And also I did an internship over the summer, actually um, it, I'm from Massachusetts. So it was in Massachusetts, but I found it through uh, the Stony Brook website. So that um, was also an opportunity within research. And we also have the Career Center where there are specific advisors that'll help for each major and whatever you're interested in. So there's paid, unpaid, um, there's volunteering, as I said, as well. So um, there they'll help you um, write your cover letters and your resume as well if you book an appointment. Um, yeah, I will say that in terms of my research, um, it's uh, it's not that difficult to get research because like uh, like Lauren said, it's a, it is a research university. Um, and at least what I do is that, you know, I, I do a lot of pipetting, like <laughs> research is, mine is more um, hands on, thankfully. Um, but I will say that like, there's a lot of opportunity. So it's like, as long as you are active in your desire to pursue research, you will find something. Excellent. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, we oftentimes get questions from students about how can I find support at Stony Brook? Um, so there's a whole bunch of different ways to find it, um, especially as a first year student. Um, so during that 
first year seminar that I mentioned, your 101 and 102 classes, um, they usually go over all of this information. And they're also um, a group of support. So you have other students coming in as freshmen as well, who's in, usually within the same undergraduate college you are, so has the same interests you do. You're all working together. Um, you have that liaison to the university who is teaching that class for you as well. Um, so here in the first year seminar, you can go and ask all sorts of different questions. Um, they also talk about stress management, time management, all the things that are really gonna help make you successful all four years. Uh, we have actually a three-tiered system of academic advising at Stony Brook. So you have your undergraduate college advisor as a freshman. You'll have a regular academic advisor to make sure you're meeting all the core graduation requirements. And then you'll also have an advisor for your major as well to make sure that you're on track for your major and doing what's necessary to graduate. Uh, we also have a, a program called SASI, also known as Student Accessibility and Support Center. Um, so here, this center is really great for any students who need services. Um, they can help provide those to students. So whether it's you need a scribe or um, extra time on tests, we also have a sensory room as well. Um, and they have a whole bunch of counselors there for our students too. So that's another um, place on campus. Then there's academic success and tutoring center. So we do have a tutoring center on campus for different courses. Uh, we also have a math lab. So if you're taking math and you need help with some of your math classes, preparing for tests and things like that, they can help you there. And then we also have a writing center. So, um, you know, you do have to write papers in college. So the writing center can also help you in terms of formulating your paper, editing, and those types of things too. So any of our students want to comment on those areas? Nope. Okay. Okay, Varsha. <laughs> um, I was just going to say they're extremely helpful and they're usually run by students who um, either got an A or an A plus in the class. Um, so it's very, it's a very good resource to have if you're maybe too intimidated to talk to the professor themselves. Um, and they work very individual based um, and you can ask all your questions. I remember going for calc and I would go with practice questions. And I remember sitting there for almost two hours and going through each problem. Um, so they're extremely helpful and it's very convenient to sign up for any type of tutoring. Thanks, Varsha. And you just reminded me too, um, professors also have office hours too. So you can always go see them during their office hours as well. So in terms of student life on campus and activities, um, we're a pretty big campus. We have about 10,000 students who live on campus. So we're a big community of students um, and we have all sorts of fun events to look forward to throughout the year. Uh, we have an app called Quark where it lists all the different events. So you can just go onto the app and find out what's going on. And pretty much there's usually something going on just about every day throughout the year. Um, we also have things planned on the weekends as well for our students to do. Some of our fun traditions are Roth Pond Regatta. That's at the end of the spring semester. Students build boats out of cardboard, duct tape, and paint, and they race them across Roth Pond. Some get a little soggy and sink. Some make it across, but that's kind of all part of the fun of it. Um, you'll even see faculty and staff out there with boats as well. Um, but we have live music and cotton candy and popcorn and a big barbecue and everybody comes out for it. So it's just a great day for all of our students and staff at Stony Brook. Everybody looks forward to it as well. Um, we have concerts in the fall and spring. So we've had some pretty big name artists come to campus. Um, that's, we have a picture of Strawberry Fest. We also have, I think they also had like an Apple Fest and a homecoming hoopla. Um, we have Earthstock, which is all about the environment and awareness as well. Um, this was homecoming weekend this weekend. So that was a pretty big one for us. Um, I mentioned we are division one in sports. So there's usually some sort of sporting event going on. Um, we also have an awesome marching band. Um, they're pretty great. They're the spirit of Stony Brook and they've been called the fastest growing marching band in the country. Um, you may have seen them in the past. They've been in the lotto commercials and they also did a promo 
uh, for Pepsi for the Super Bowl halftime show a few years back too. So they're a really great group of students, very talented. If you play an instrument, I highly recommend joining the marching band because they're so great. Um, but we also have intramural teams as well. So if you wanna stay active and involved, we have the Campus Rec Center. Um, do Students, do you wanna talk about some of the things that you're involved in and things that you like to enjoy doing at Stony Brook? Yeah, I'll just jump in here real quick. So I actually um, played sports in high school and then I wanted to like keep going. So I did the intramural sports and then that's how I got my first job on campus. So I um, officiate like the game. So the like the basketball and the flag football game. So that's really fun. And then also in terms of like other support, I'm a mentor um, for the College of Engineering. So that, so I believe other um, departments do have like mentoring programs too. So that's just another way. So a mentor is just like an upperclassman who like has been through like the whole process and stuff. And that's just another person you can lean on for support. Uh, yeah, so like like I said, I'm, I'm a part of LASSO. And so we host programs every week. Um, and I know that there's like, you, you're never not gonna have something to do on campus because there's always so many like there's so many clubs i think there's like 200 plus clubs and they all host something um every day so like you just have to check um the quirk app which is like a special app that uh sony brook students use to see if there's uh, events on campus you can just check that and you will probably find something to do if you are bored so tell me as when you came in as freshmen um, did you think it was easy to get involved? Was it hard to get involved? Um, you know, what was your journey like? Yeah, so as a freshman, I think I think it was it was relatively easy just because uh, Stony Brook hosts uh, the I forgot the name of but the fairs for clubs, the club fairs, the and fairs. yeah, the involvement fairs, and so every club goes out to those uh, fairs, which is like I think two days uh in a week i think it's like wednesday and thursday the involvement fairs and basically you just you you get to meet and introduce yourself to the fate to the to um all the clubs at the school and you get to hear about what they do uh you get to hear about when they're hosting their next event and so you know if you do get an interest to the club you can go show out and i i think i think it was pretty uh easy just because of the involvement fair as if it wasn't because of the um involvement fair i probably wouldn't have joined lasso and Wednesdays, they usually have like a club hour, right? Isn't there like a break in the middle of the day? Yeah, there's a student lifetime, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. So we, yeah, as you mentioned, we have over 200 clubs and activities. Um, they're a wide range. So some are interest-based. I know we had like a like an exercise club where like students just like got together and just like to exercise together. Um, we have Quidditch. We have a TV studio, radio station, all those types of things. Some are academic based, like we have our pre-law society. Um, we also have a student government as well. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different things to do. Um, and if there's anything in particular that you wanna do that Stony Brook doesn't have a club, you can always um, put in the paperwork to create one as well. Um, so I mentioned before, again, Division One in athletics, this is kind of also part of our campus community at Stony Brook. Um, so sometimes students like to go and just enjoy the games and uh, cheer Stony Brook on, cheer on our fellow Seawolves as well. Um, so we have a pretty vibrant, uh, you know, campus, which is great. We recently redid our arena a couple of years back. They redid the swimming pool as well. Um, and, and we have some really excellent athletes who have won their, their conference championships as well. So um, they're doing pretty good. Oops, sorry. And in terms of living on campus at Stony Brook, um, as I mentioned, for, for freshmen, you're housed within one of those three communities. So we have three residential halls dedicated to our freshmen. So you are going to be living with other freshmen. Um, makes it much easier for you to get to meet other students as well. Um, so in terms of the living situation, uh, those buildings are hallway style. Um, so that's usually two people to a room. Sometimes we have three in a room, but those rooms are typically a little bit larger and they're, they're made to fit three people. 
Um, and then hallway is uh, bathrooms usually in the hallway as well. Other types of living that we have on campus. So after freshman year, we have suite style, we have apartment style. Um, we have a, a fairly new building. It was just opened a couple years ago. That one suite style with single bedrooms. I know we have a new apartment building that's going to be opening soon. And then I know they're gonna be starting another new building after that. So there's definitely been a big demand for students um, to be on campus, which is great. Um, does anyone want to talk about life on campus, possibly um, dining on campus as well? I know we usually get some questions on that. Okay, I'll just <laughs> jump in since uh, I was a little bit quiet. So um, I don't know how, like, what else to say other than what you said, but like, there is like the different types, as you said, and usually as a freshman, well, I guess it's different now, so I won't say like usually, but I was in like corridor style and like I would just see people in the bathroom all the time and then they'd just be like, oh, hey, like I see you a lot, so why, why not just say hi? So that's like a cool way to like meet people and stuff. And then as far as the food, um, there's a lot of options on campus. You could also like off campus, like right by the train station, which is like a 10 minute walk, I would say. They like open up some new um, food um, stores over there. So you can do that, you could order. You could go to the mall that's like a 10 minute drive, I believe. So there's like a lot of stuff to do around campus if like that's what you wanna do. But um, you'll definitely be busy. Like downtime is like, <laughs> that one, that's the time you enjoy so uh yeah that's that's what I'll say for that sometimes students ask us also like what is what do other students do on weekends what's there to do at Stony Brook so unfortunately I haven't been home as much as I wanted to so usually I I like to sleep in on the weekends I which a lot of people do and then I like use the time to catch up on work and like yesterday was football games. So usually there's football games on Saturday. So I'll do that. Or I'll just like watch TV, but it's usually like pretty chill. There is stuff to do like um, Kevin was saying on the Cork app, but um, I just like to like chill on the weekends personally. You like to recharge for the week ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got it. Anyone else you want to add anything? Oh yeah, people take like day trips to Manhattan, like on the, um, train so that's also something you could do if you right. choose to do and then um Stony Brook is cool because they have like tickets to like they used to have tickets to Broadway shows and then that'd be like on a Saturday or a Sunday night and it'd be like 30 bucks and like you go as a group to like the Broadway show so that was cool and I believe they're going to fight for us or they went like last week so that was also pretty cool so they also offer like discounted tickets for stuff too yeah, um, they also play movies in our Staller Center. Um, so it's a huge screen. It's a basically a, a bigger version of a movie theater. Um, and they play, I think next week they're playing Halloween movies. Um, so they have that. And as Tony mentioned, they did do a Six Flags trip um, last week. And they also did do a whitewater rafting trip in the beginning of the semester as well. So we have our undergraduate student uh, government that puts together these events for our student body. And they post about it on Instagram, um, on the Cork app, we get emails. And it's just a great way to make new friends while still exploring um, other places around campus um, as well. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so I think now we're going to change over to our questions. So I'm just going to check out the questions that we have um, in the chat. I see you're all asking a lot of questions, which is great. Um, is there any form of transfer transportation that we're allowed to bring to campus, like a bike or a scooter? Any one of our students want to answer that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can bring a bike. I'm not so sure about a scooter, but I think I think I think you can bring a scooter. I've seen people with scooters, uh, but uh, yeah, you can bring a bike. There's bike racks um, in every residential hall that you can put your bike in. So yeah, great. You can Thanks. bring a skateboard. A lot of yep. Skateboard. Skateboard. Yep. 
For the marching band, you also have to try out. Yes, you do. I believe tryouts are at the be very beginning of this semester. What are the hours for dining? I'm going to re refer to our students for that one. Yeah, for for the dining halls for East and West, I'm not so sure. Uh, but I know when I was a freshman, it would go from like 7 a.m. to like, at least for West Side Dining, which is the dining hall in the West Side of campus. Um, it would go from like 7 a.m. to like 2 a.m. It would go pretty late. Yeah. But I don't know about East. Yeah, there's usually always, especially I feel like during like finals and midterms, everything tends to stay open much later during those weeks as well. There is also on the campus dining website, they have like the hours for everything, all the places. Yeah, and there's a whole wide range. We have like the cafeteria style where you swipe once you go in and it's like unlimited buffet. Then there's like take and go options. We have Starbucks on campus and um, just a whole bunch, just a, a wide range of, of food um, variety, really. Um, do you have a dietitian on campus? Are they free or do you have to pay? So yes, we do have a dietitian on campus um, for students. I don't know if you have to pay. I think it's free no. to students. Yeah, it's free. I think you just have to make an appointment. Yes, okay. Um, regarding dining, uh, what are allergen friendly options? So um, you can actually work with, our, they're called FSA and they already have options that are allergy friendly options. So whether it's gluten-free, dairy-free, those types of things. Um, they actually have a section I know in one of the residential halls that's specifically dedicated to that. Um, but if you have like a specific request, they will work with you on that to make sure that you're getting what you need. Uh, is there a shuttle to take you to the stores nearby? Yes, so we have a bus system that goes around campus and off campus as well. Um, so off campus, it usually takes students to like the Smith Haven Mall, um, that's where like Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, whole bunch of restaurants, you know, like Cheesecake Factory, all that bunch of stores and shopping um, across the street from there. They also have like the movie theater as well. Um, so it can take you there. It takes you to Target. We have Target near campus too. Um, and then there's also a shuttle that can take you to Port Jefferson as well, back and forth. Did I cover everything? <laughs> yeah. And then also um, the campus bus can also take you to the railroad since that's on our campus as well. So you can, everything is pretty much within walking distance. I'd say usually about like 10 minutes or so to get to most places on campus. Um, but if you're carrying things and you don't wanna walk, if the weather's not great, you can take the shuttle to get to um, the railroad also. Um, so in, in, return, uh, in regards to our location near New York, how does that impact your co-op and internship opportunities? So yes, yeah, so we do have students who do internships and things in the city. Um, it's really a, a, a great location for our students, especially since we have the train right on campus. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different options. The Career Center will help set you up with that. Um, also in regards to internships, you can choose if you wanna do them you know, during your semester, depending on how you work your classes out, your class schedule, or even during like winter or summer sessions too, they can help with that. Okay, so someone had a question regarding college credit. Um, if they have about 60 college credits coming in, um, are you allowed to park your car on campus? So, okay, so good. So let's go back to the car thing. So um, technically freshmen and sophomores are not allowed to have a car on campus, but it does go based on your amount of credits. So when you're first entering the university, um, that first semester, they're still transferring those credits in. So I think it's after that semester then is how you'll get your status of credit. So I believe after that is when you would be able to park, right? I'm deferring to my students on that one. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, yeah, I would have no, I don't know how to drive. So. <laughs> I have zero glue. <laughs> Um, for our students, how do you handle part-time jobs? Um, I don't have a part-time job, but I have research but I would that I would say like had like it's the, the same amount of hours as a part-time job. I'm usually in the lab for 15 hours a week. Um, but I would say that it's doable, but I feel like as a freshman, you probably, and especially your first semester, I would probably not do a part-time job just because it's like you're slowly getting into the hang of things. 
Um, I would wait till like second semester once you get the hang of things on college. Um, but I know a lot of friends when I was a freshman who did have part-time jobs. A lot of them had uh, part-time jobs in the mall that um, where the you can take the shuttle uh, from on campus. Um, and it's like 30 minutes. Oh, no, I would say it's 10 minutes away. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, some of them, they were able to do it. So I feel like, yeah, you could do it. But I, I would I would not I would suggest not to do it until your second semester, just so that you're comfortable. Great. Uh, does Stony Brook have an ATO pre program? Yes, we do. Um, typically, students you know, will check that off on their application when they're applying. Um, we have it's mainly mostly incoming freshmen. However, sometimes they do take transfers depending on space availability. Um, so yes, we do have an HEOP program. Um, is it easy to change majors throughout the year if you don't like what you're currently taking? I'm going to ask the students that question. I can answer that. Um, so I personally applied as a health science major and am still a health science major, but it's extremely easy to change uh, your major, you would just, I would suggest that you would speak um, to an advisor. And it's, it's as simple as filling out a form as to what major you want to switch to. Um, and a lot of people do add on or remove majors and minors if they're interested in something else other than just their major. And that's just as easy as well. Uh, so I added on my minor after taking a class that I was interested in. And um, a lot of people do get stressed about, you know, uh, switching or um, just not coming in or switching multiple times. I know someone who switched almost four times their major and they graduated perfectly fine. So it's just, it's a wow. process as to when you like get, take, maybe you're taking that one class that'll just spark your interest and you really want to change that major. Um, so it's, it's a very personal journey. Um, and there's no like right or wrong to what major you do or, how many times you change it <laughs> that's yeah, a good I, point i would also say that um like don't be afraid if you don't have a major like by like by the end of freshman year because there's a lot of classes at least in the beginning that you take that are like just primarily uh occupy your general uh curriculum requirements so you'll be fine and also there are like let's say you kind of you don't know what major you want to take but you know that you want to like do stem or you you are still like under the same uh pre-med track um, a lot of the same courses that you will take will be the same for both for like either major that you would have taken. Right. You have until the end of your sophomore year to declare a major. So you do have time to take courses in different areas to kind of spark your interest. Excellent. Thanks so much. Um, placement exams. So what is the placement exam and does it determine which level of course that you will need to take? Uh, yeah, so I think there's uh, there's placement exams for for math, I think. Yeah, and it just like it just decides on what level of math you're going to take if you are going to take math on your freshman year. Um, and I think that's the only one that I, I know there's also placement exams for uh, languages. Um, but that's it so far that I know. There's also placement exams for chemistry. Right. Um, but that's usually... Uh, I took it online. I don't know if it's the same. Right. Uh, and that's for students interested in the STEM areas. They're mm -hmm. the ones that usually have to take the chem placement exam. So it's chem. If you're in STEM, there's a math, a writing, and a language. Um, now, depending on how you did, if you took any college courses or AP or IB, it's possible that you could place out of it and not have to take the exam. Um, so that's also an an option, um, but that typically happens closer to like orientation time of year, um, right before we register for classes, they wanna know that information so we can properly place you in the correct classes. Um, is dining paid through a card type? So does anyone wanna discuss how um, the meal plan works? So when you're a freshman, you have to get the unlimited meal plan, which is like for the buffet style in the dining hall. And then you get a certain number of dining dollars, depending on um, which plan you choose. And the dining dollars are like where you take the food like to go. Like I don't know how else to like describe that, but like once you um, like become an upperclassman, like no longer a freshman, then you can choose like whatever meal plan you want. 
But if you're in a cooking building, which there's like four or five of them out of like however many dormitories there are, then you don't have to get a meal plan and then you can like cook on your own. Or you can also cook on your own too when you have a meal plan. So that part's up to you too. <laughs> Uh, are there hello food choices in the dining hall? Yes, there are. We definitely have that option. Uh, do many students go home on the weekends or is the campus pretty vibrant on the weekends? I'm gonna let you all answer that one. Don't all jump at once. <laughs> well, just point of view, this is a weekend and you all currently are on campus, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's three students. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of quiet, but like, I'm also very tired right now. So a lot of people just like sleep. Oh, I know, like I just stay in my room a lot. But like, I went to the game yesterday. So like, I use one day to like go out and like do stuff. And then the next day to like, a lot of people are in the library too, actually. So that's like another place where people are. But if you want to be like vibrant, you can you can do whatever you want to. Yeah, um, as mentioned before, there's always events um, on the weekends, but Sundays students like to like wind down and get back into the groove of getting into the work working week. Um, but yeah, so this homecoming weekend was a really good example of just events happening all the time. Um, but yeah, we do have a lot of commuter students, but there's still always something happening on campus for residents as well. Uh, would playing a, as a D1 player prevent you from attending some of the events? That's a good question. I think it would just depend on your schedule really and where you're playing and if you're traveling. Um, again, there are events scheduled all throughout the year. So I'm sure there's definitely things that you can still be involved in and participate in as well. How safe is the campus and the area? Does anyone wanna answer that? It's pretty safe. I mean, it is an open campus, but we're also like kind of in the middle of like the woods. So it's, it's pretty a, safe. And it, we also, huh? as they say, it's suburban. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's suburban. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm from Queens. So this is very different. Um, we also have the RSP, which is the residential safety program. So they are like students and they, um, their job is to like check to make sure all the doors are locked. Um, so when you're a resident, you get an ID card and that ID card is only for like the dorm you live in. So in terms of safety, like there is that. And then like if you're walking alone at night, you can call them and like they'll um, they'll be there walking with you. So like you feel safe. So I do feel safe on campus, I have to say. Excellent. Yeah, we do have um, we don't have security guards. We have actual New York State police officers who are highly trained um, in all different types of things so um i have to say like they're really great they're also really involved with our students and they get to know the students and they they teach like the pink gloves boxing on campus and and things like that too um so i have to say they're they're a really great asset to our campus uh this is an interesting question favorite place to be alone in campus um for me i would say it's the wang center it's very nice. It's a very nice place to just like be because the scenery is nice. And also uh, there's a lot of white noise that like kind of just calms you down. Um, so yeah. Anyone else? Have there, the new computer science building is really nice. <laughs> yeah. It's like very, like there's a lot of glass. So it just looks like really, I don't know. I just like it. A lot of sunlight. <laughs> yeah. Farsha, do you have a favorite place? other than the admissions office? <laughs> um, I really like the humanities building. It has a lot of windows as well. So the lighting is really nice. The lighting right now is a lot, but um, I mean, it's um, there's also just a lot of greenery everywhere on campus. So um, the, the fall colors are coming in now. So it's everywhere, wherever we see windows, it's, it's great. Great, thanks. Um, we have a question regarding the SAT or the ACT. Um, do you have to submit it? Uh, so if you don't get a good score, do you have to submit them all? 
Um, so general rule of thumb, we are test optional for fall 2022, so you don't have to submit test scores. Um, or if you are submitting test scores, you can actually submit them all, and then we only look at the highest score. Um, for SAT, we will super score, whereas the ACT, we just take the highest composite score. So that's test scores in a nutshell. Um, we had a question about SAT scores for engineering. So uh, for engineering, we're, I mean, just like all of our applicants, we're looking at the full application. Um, our average SAT score is around a 1350. Um, so that's not the minimum, that's the average, that's where most students fall who get offered admissions. Um, engineering, those programs tend to be restricted and more competitive in nature because the amount of applications we get for them versus the amount of space we have in classes. So um, there isn't necessarily any one specific SAT score that we're looking for. Um, typically those students have above the average, um, but they're also gonna be looking at the math section of your SAT as well as how you did in your math and science classes all throughout high school in conjunction with your overall GPA too. Okay. Um, how often are you able to leave campus to visit your families? Um, are family members allowed to come visit? Um, you're allowed off campus at any time, really. <laughs> we're, we're not holding you here. <laughs> so you could really, I mean, at any time. And your families can come visit you as well. Does anyone want to talk about like the visitation um, policy within the residential halls? I think because of COVID and everything, sorry, Marcia, um, it was a little bit um, pushed back, but um, now I think you can invite anyone. And if you want someone to stay over, then you just have to tell your um, roommates. And I think you have to tell your RA as well, your resident assistant. Um, but yeah, your family could come at any time. They, like if they want to visit you, take you out to lunch or something. My mom used to do that. And then we also have family weekend, which is like the third or fourth weekend in the um, semester. And then they have like cute little family events for uh, every like the freshmen and stuff. So that that's really cool too. Great, thanks. Um, someone was asking about your class schedules. What time do they usually start and end? I can talk about that. Um, so the traditional high school is usually, let's say eight to eight to three. Um, it's nothing like that in college. So you get to basically choose your own schedule when you have classes. So I personally am not a morning person and I like to have my classes after preferably like 10. Um, the earliest class I have this semester is 9.45. Um, I have yet to take an 8 a.m. Hopefully I will never have to. Uh, yeah, so you can basically choose um, however many classes depending on your credits. So the minimum credits that you have to take in order to be a full-time student is 12 credits. Um, so usually you will have traditionally like two to three classes per day. So they will be repeated each week, each week, at least two to three times, depending on what major you are um, or what classes you're taking. And as I said, you can kind of schedule them based off of your liking. Um, a lot of students like to take a break in the middle of the day to keep leave time for lunch or um, just studying in general. A lot of st students like to take evening classes. So maybe you're a commuter and you work in the morning and afternoon. So you would like to take classes later on in the day. So it's very personalized and you can choose them based off of what you would like. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would, um, I would add on and say that like, I think I'm also not a morning, a morning person. So I, I, take, I try to take as the minimum amount of morning classes that I can. But I think the earliest uh, morning class is like 8.30, 8.30 in the morning. Um, and the latest class is probably like from 7.35 p.m. to like 9. Pretty sure that's the latest, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of times your classes are gonna depend on your professor and when they're also offering the classes as well. Yeah. 
Okay, so we have some questions here. Um, does uh, Stony Brook have a study abroad programs geared toward pre-med students? Um, yes, I believe we do. We have whole, oh, we have probably over 300 study abroad opportunities. Some are taught at another university abroad. Some are winter or summer sessions led by our Stony Brook faculty members. I know our students have gone to some really far places um, and have really provide amazing service um, to communities. I know we've had dental students go abroad, uh, pre-med students, we've had teachers go abroad as well. So they're really going into some really far places and, and really making an impact in the world, which is amazing. Um, just, go ahead. Yeah, go right ahead. Just to add on, um, we do have public health brigades and medical brigade clubs. So they go um, to Honduras and the Dominican Republic for about a week during either winter or spring break. And they basically help uh, villages there with their health care. So um, whether that might be providing toothbrushes or just like giving flu shots, um, it's just really helpful uh, for you to travel and get that experience in a third world country. Thank you so much. Uh, do freshman dorms have cooking stoves? Um, yeah, I believe they all have them in the, usually the lower level of the residential hall that they have kitchens that anyone in the building can use. Um, if you're in an apartment, then clearly you have your own kitchen within your room too. Um, how do you apply for a scholarship? Well, academic scholarships you don't need to apply for. We will automatically review you for those when you apply, so you don't need to fill out anything additional. Um, any other scholarships would come from the financial aid office, so you can check their website, and then anything else need-based would come from the FAFSA form. Uh, are there internship opportunities? Yes, there are. The Career Center can help get you internships. Um, we have some paid, we have some non-paid positions. Um, there's really a whole wide range uh, and a whole bunch of different companies that we place students in as well. So whether it's near Stony Brook, in Stony Brook, outside of Stony Brook in the city, if you come from another state, they can also help you get internships where you live closer to home if you wanna do an internship over your summer as well. Um, what would you say are the biggest pros and cons about attending Stony Brook? I know it's a tough one. <laughs> I know Tony would like more downtime, right? <laughs> um, I would say that the biggest pro, at least for me, like I'm a I'm I'm a student on the pre on the, the pre med track, and so I would say that the biggest pro for me uh, for me is just how close and how connected Stony Brook is to the medical field because of the hospital. Um, there's a lot of opportunities um, because of the uh, Stony Brook Hospital, and there's a lot of opportunities for mentorship as well. Um, and yeah, I would say in general, um, if you are a pre-med student, um, Stony Brook is very invested in that. So I would say that's probably the biggest pro for me. No con? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're a little biased, so. <laughs> I don't feel like the cons I would say are like specific to Stony Brook, which is why I can't say like like you said it is a lot of work so i feel like but then it would be the case at any other school too so there's that but there's also a lot of support so that would be my my pro <laughs> okay great um are there career counselors yes there are they are in the career center so we have a whole bunch of career counselors there that can help guide you throughout your time at stony brook and actually if you're an alumni at Stony Brook, you can also come back to our career counselors. So they will um, provide service to you even as a graduate of Stony Brook. Um, how many people per dorm? So typically hallway styles, usually tutor room. Sometimes we have triples. Again, I mentioned before, those are more designed to hold three people. Um, after that, we also have suite style. So those are what, like six or eight people with a few bedrooms and a common living area. Um, do you know how many the apartments hold? Uh, usually it's uh, oh, apartments. I would think it's all like four, four, okay. five. Yeah. Okay. And I think suite style is six because there's three, like three rooms per a suite. Yeah. Okay. So two to a room. Got it. Um, is there a Muslim student association? That's a good question. Does anyone know the answer to that? Yes, there is. 
Great, thank you. Um, okay, is there a meeting to help go through the steps of applying to Stony Brook? Yes, so we do have virtual information sessions. Some are pre-recorded, so you can do those. You can also do a live one as well um, and type in questions and they'll answer them live just like here. Um, so definitely check out our, our um, info sessions online. Um, we also will be emailing you more information if we have any more specialized events. Um, sometimes we do virtual events for different departments on campus. So if you want to know more about each major as well. Um, so, you know, just keep checking your email. We're going to send you more information about Stony Brook. Uh, is there a shuttle that can take you long distance transportation? Um, so typically the, the shuttles either go around campus or off campus. Off campus, it's usually within like, eh, maybe like a five mile radius or so. Um, the Long Island Railroad is really gonna help you get to where you wanna go long distance. Um, we used to have like one of those five buses as well that went through campus. I don't know if they're still doing that, um, but mainly if you need to go anywhere, typically the railroad's your best bet for that. Um, someone's asking if we have singles. We have some singles. Those are typically for medical purposes. So you do have to submit more information for that as well. Um, and last question, are any elective classes mandatory such as language classes? Um, so language, we usually require two semesters of a language at Stony Brook. Unless you're an engineering student, then you do not have a language requirement. However, um, by taking the placement exam, sometimes you can place out of a language, or if you have AP credit, IB credit, or uh, college credit in a language course, um, it's possible to also apply that credit to Stony Brook and place out of language. Um, typically, we have a set of core liberal arts and science credits at Stony Brook. I believe there are about 60 credits worth of classes. And then you also have elective credits in addition to that. So those are typically five classes. And those, if you take them all in the same area, can usually make up a minor. So it's very easily easy to pick up a minor at Stony Brook. Or if you just want to take them in other areas that you're interested in, you can do that too. Um, and then typically after that, the rest of your courses are within your major. So that's a little bit about uh, the Stony Brook makeup of our degree. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you to our panel of experts, to our students. Um, you really, you know, help make Stony Brook a really awesome place. So thanks for joining us today and sharing um, all of your, your interests and experiences about Stony Brook. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can always email us, enroll at stonybrook.edu. You can also call us. Our number is there on the screen. Um, and definitely take one of those virtual info sessions if you have the chance, and hopefully we'll see you on campus. So thanks again, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, enjoy your day.